in it. I think, well, you, you liar. <laughs> it wasn't in it. I said, Tell they're the really truth. in their ego then, aren't they? They're really in their well, false well, purposes. Cause now what, happens, what happens, JC, is this. We have two, we have, to, and this, this is exactly what happens in hypnosis. This is what I have to uh, let people, coach people with. For example, when they're talking to the higher self. And I say, when I ask your question, I want you to trust the very first thing that comes into your mind. Because that's how the, the higher self and our emotional body and our unconscious, they answer like that, quietly, quietly. And then what happens is the ego comes bumbling in afterwards, shouting, going, it can't be that because it's not good enough. It's not big enough. It's not, you know. And so that that's unfortunately what people do is that they feel it and they go, oh, God, that feels so bad. And the mind says, you'll have to say something else. Yes, to. I can remember uh, the voice, like two voices, kind of like going, like my chatterbox mind going, no, 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 don't say that, don't say that. But then there was this part of me going, just trust it and say it. Absolutely. <laughs> so I remember when that session, there was, uh, yeah, there was moments where there was some things I couldn't say because my ego was taking over and going, yeah. don't say it. Yeah. Because I was aware of, yeah, I just was aware of how it would sound, but then it would slip back into the hypnosis, into the, the unconscious sure. mind, or the, it would. But there was there was a couple of topics or questions. I think it slipped into the, uh, you know, the control thing. Yeah, it, isn't that interesting? It's it's it happens, and all we've got to do is manage our ego. We can't get rid of it. We can't do anything. We just need to manage <laughs> it. You know, and sometimes are you allowed to swear on this program? Yes, and you're allowed to swear on your channel. I swear a lot. <laughs> okay, so with, with the ego, sometimes you know you've got to make it. You, you've got to. It's not making it your friend, but you've got to understand how it works. But sometimes, when it's really important, what you have to do is say to it, "Shut the fuck up." <laughs> and and it does for a little bit. It goes away, and then it'll come back because it'll always come back. But sometimes I've got to tell it, just oh, just just shut the fuck up just get away from me for a moment i think i did that today to myself <laughs> yes. it like, helps just don't want that <laughs> yeah absolutely wow so this is this is so what were we up to we were up to we were talking we're about taking to... a sense check of people when they, when they come and and, and finding mm -hmm. that you know most people are most people are in when they when they need therapy are in have a very low self esteem low self-worth low self-love and th and then what i do is i i do that positive side and then i then i say to them i'm going to ask you these questions do not make any reference to what you've just told me and they do it the opposite way and i say i hate myself say that and how does that feel and quite often what happens with i love myself somebody might score themselves at a seven but when they say i hate myself it bears no resemblance to what it's called so they might say a seven as well you know, and and so what happened? Because you know we we've got lots of parts to us, and so there's a part of us that doesn't like us when we're not very well. You know, there's a yeah. part of us that's disappointed yeah. in in ourselves. Mm. So that's that's how I start, and, and that's where I know. Hang on, where are we? But uh, you know, I've had people who've said zero. I love myself zero. I hate myself ten. And sometimes after a couple of sessions, where every time I do a session, I rescore them. And it changes very, very quickly. With hypnosis, when you go back and you resolve that problem, as long as once the problem's resolved, the person can get find the balance again. And the balance is, hey, I'm a good person. You know, I'm a nice person. Exactly, exactly. And it's all the conditioning and programming and stuff that we are undoing with the hypnosis. So yeah. <clears throat> I want you to explain to everybody because I had a few friends who I love dearly and but they said to me that uh, years ago they used to believe that hypnosis was like MK Ultra. okay? Yeah. That it was a mind control thing. And I actually have said in a few interviews or videos, it's actually the opposite. <laughs> Because you cannot partake in hypnotherapy without consent. You can't partake in it, I guess, in, in this type of hypnotherapy. Is that true? Is that a true statement to say? I, absolutely, it, it is. But I need to add something to it because, yeah. because um, like anything, like any hypnosis is neither good nor bad. It just is. And you choose what to do with it, what you want to do with it. Yeah. <laughs> so I, yeah. I use what I call clinical hypnotherapy. Yeah. Clinical hypnotherapy, exactly as you've described, is, right, I'm going to guide you into hypnosis. Do I have your permission to do that? Uh, and, 
at any moment you can come out of this, you can tell me, Gordon, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not comfortable and that's it. I'm going to offer you suggestions. You choose whether you want to accept them or not. If you trust me and understand that everything I do is for the highest good, you'll accept them and you're unconscious. Yes. Of them. So that's a very, very open, honest kind of hypnosis. Then you've got stage hypnosis. Yeah. Which is about, do you want, are you an extrovert? Do you want to get up on stage and have a bit of fun? Okay. So again, that's consensual. The people who get up there aren't forced to get up there. They do, they do the hand clasp and they show that they, 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 they want to do it. But then you've got this other hypnosis, which is called waking hypnosis. And this is the hypnosis that is used for bad. And it's also used for good. I mean, you can use yeah. it for good, you know. You, I'll, t I'll give you an example of waking hypnosis. So I can say, you know, we're having a chat and we're really getting into flow. And I can say, do you know what? I just feel so good. I just feel so good. Do you feel that? Can you feel that on the inside? Right? That's me suggesting something. And, and of course, if, you, if you're in the flow with me, you go, actually, yeah, I do. I feel really good. Okay? So I've just given you a suggestion. All right? However... When you don't know that somebody's doing it, for example, you sit down and watch the TV, you don't know that what they're doing is constant flow of waking hypnosis suggestions. Be scared, stay at home, shut your mouth, don't think. Yeah? You're right. Mm -hmm. Okay. I've had, so, I've had a, a guy do waking hypnosis for me. I'm serious. I, I, I could I think he studied in OP and he was trying to do suggest suggestions. And uh, I picked up on this a couple of times after speaking to him and I was like, I know what he's trying. He was putting words, particular key words into mm. suggest things, saying the opposite that he didn't want to do these things and then would but it was and and I when I figured it out, I broke the thing and I kept I'd I thought I'd be sleepy when he talked to me. <laughs> I'd be like really like kind of sleepy and go what what's going on here every time I speak to this guy I'm feeling sleepy and uh yeah so I I agree there are some people who do this especially if they're kind of masters at at this stuff yeah we all do it every single in it. every in every conversation that we have JC we are trying to offer suggest and change the person for the good mm. or for the bad, mm. it depends. You know, it's all about attitude. So this is mm. this constant um, kind of uh, dynamic that we have where I'm trying to convince you of my opinion, you're trying to convince me of your opinion. But it's when it's when it's done on purpose for bad, that's when you've got to be ever so careful. And probably that guy, you're right. I mean, with NLP, NLP okay. is all about playing with language. And, you know, just you can say to somebody, for example, the, the classic one is when you say, you know, don't think about a pink elephant. And the That's first thing... That's pretty much what was going on there, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we, we've got to be very careful. We've got to be careful, eh? Because there are people who know, you know, I've spent 10000 on on my training. The baddies have spent trillions on understanding how to do it. Yes. Absolutely, along with all their social engineering studies and stuff that with Tavistock Institute, hundreds of years of these studies, it's unbelievable what they've yeah. done. Yeah, exactly. To, to us all, we've all been indoctrinated. So how can we use this now as a, a healing modality? How, do, how is it used as a healing modality? So I, I want to, so number one, let's, we've demystified what, a good clinical hypnosis session would do okay mm -hmm. and so what how does this then is how is it taken from by a person so let's say we've got people who have some real issues okay and that they just can't get over uh for example a feeling of worthlessness okay and what would you do typically if there is someone who's who comes to you and says i'm just really struggling uh, I, I just don't know. Everything seems to fail. I, I don't feel good. At, you know, I'm not. I'm not feeling good. I don't feel motivated. Um, what do I do? I, I need your help. Okay. What do you say to these people? Okay. Let can I if I, if if I may, I'll take you to the premise of everything that I that I do. I work under this premise of the first. Let's say I would say the first seven years of everybody's life. Is, is are the most fundamental years 
of of the whole life. If you have seven good years, you're going to have your life's going to run on rails. Okay. If you have seven dodgy years, you're going to go through your life with a buckled wheel. And depending on how dodgy they are, the more buckled the wheel. Yeah. So you just don't have a smooth ride through life. But why? The, the reason the reason that the first seven years are, are fundamental is because when we're born as babies, babies are in the deepest level of hypnosis that you can possibly get. That when you measure the brain waves, they're in deep, deep, deep hypnosis. That's why when you when you hold a baby in your hands, they're, they're not really there. They have lucid moments, but most times they're off in the you know the the world of, of their world or whatever. Yeah. But what happens when we're in hypnosis, and this is what, what the, how they use the television, when you're in hypnosis, your critical factor, I mean, children don't even have a critical factor, but the critical factor, which is the guardian on the gate, that goes, bullshit, I'm calling bullshit, yeah? The guardian on the gate goes for a cup of coffee, right? And what happens is that suggestions can go in, just go in. So with children, they don't even have a critical factor. They're in deep hypnosis. And so every suggestion from, what, what, is a, what is a suggestion? It must come from somebody who you respect, somebody who's in a position of power, or somebody you're frightened of, okay? So what children, adults for them are gods. They're gods, they're all seeing, all knowing, the parents all seeing, all knowing, all powerful. And so whatever the parent says, the child accepts as truth, yeah? And because they're in hypnosis, and we actually, the children don't come out of hypnosis until they're about 11, all right? They're in levels of hypnosis. So what happens is this, if we have beautiful parents who love us and who want the best for us, then 95% of the time they're giving us beautiful suggestions. And then 5% of the time, because we're not perfect, they give us bad ones, yeah? But if we've got parents who have no idea and they're giving us bad suggestions all the time, we're in real trouble. So what happens is when somebody comes who's not worthy, who doesn't feel worthy, I know that the problem started when they were a child. And it's, it's so easy. I just say to them, so what was the relationship like with your parents? Okay. And they say, and they'll always give me the good one first. And they'll do the, the, right, so they'll say, well, you know, my mom, mom was really kind, mom was really nice, you know, she was nice. I mean, she was distant sometimes, and I'm, 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 that's, this is my hot button, listen, she was distant sometimes, okay, I'll just make a little note of that. And well, so what about your dad? Well, my dad wasn't there really, okay? But they, they don't put any importance on that at all. My dad wasn't there. And I'm thinking, okay, there's a there's screaming off the page, you know, that... Because, you, you know, we need what we need from our parents, specifically from our mum, is we need love, nurturing. And from our father, we need approval. Presence and approval, yep. Approval. And mm. when we don't get the approval, and this is m as much for girls as boys, when we don't get the approval uh, from our father, what happens is we end up being people pleasers. And we go through our life seeking approval from everybody yeah. when really what we want is approval from our father but we because we never got it we and we try to fill this it's like having a bucket with a hole in we try to fill it with approval and so people pleasers become liars that tell people to do things that are never going to do them you know it's it's a disaster being a people pleaser but it's all about the fact that they just they never felt good about themselves because the dad never said i'm proud of you 